Hey, good morning. Welcome to another daily devotional. Today is episode number 18 in our study of the book of Acts. Today we are in Acts chapter 9, verses 20 through 31. We are going to continue a story that we started in episode number 17, and that is the conversion of a man whose name was Saul. Saul was a, a Pharisee. He was a brilliant Pharisee. He knew, uh, he knew the law. He knew the Old Testament, the Torah. He knew everything that it said, and he was zealous as a Jew. He was zealous as a persecutor of the Christians, but he had a miraculous conversion where Jesus intervened in his life and he got saved. He really committed his life to the Lord. Uh, Jesus really um, intervened in his life. It was through a miraculous conversion. And uh, Saul would then start going by the name of Paul uh, just shortly after this. And it was a conversion that was uh, going to have uh, dr dramatic effects upon the whole uh, new church, the new evangelism that was going on. Paul was going to uh, bring the gospel in a brand new way. He knew the Old Testament inside and out, and so he could take all of that knowledge and bring all of that knowledge and connect that knowledge to Messiah, to uh, the Meshiach, to to Jesus, our, our Yeshua. Um, Saul, Paul could connect all of that together and then be able to brilliantly discuss that around the, uh, around the region and around the world at that time uh, to bring the gospel. So let's get into it and then see the rest of the story. Now, if you remember, um, he had this dramatic uh, conversion experience on the road to Damascus. Uh, Jesus interacted with him intervened in his life in a dramatic way. Uh, God assigned a person by the name of Ananias to come and pray for him, to lay hands upon him, and to really take him under his wing. He would then study and uh, work in the nation of, uh, uh, or in the city of Damascus, which is currently the nation of Syria. Uh, he would study and uh, and really get to know the scriptures in a profound way, and really interact with the other believers. So let's look and see the story of of Paul and his early ministry, and we're going to pick it up later as we go into the book of Acts. Immediately, and so I love that word, immediately. After his conversion, he did not wait. He did not have to go to seminary. He did not have to, to uh, think about it for a while. He just immediately began to preach Christ in the synagogues. Now, he would have known the synagogues. He would have known the people in the synagogues. He would have known the Jews. He knew how to communicate to them. He knew how to speak to them. He knew how to uh, to interact with these Jews in the synagogue, the, the very Orthodox Jews, because that's what Paul himself was. Paul, going by Saul at that time, Saul was a, a, a rab, uh, he was a follower of the rabbi Gamaliel. Uh, Gamaliel was one of the highest, uh, most highest regarded rabbis in the area at the time. He, he really had common sense as a rabbi, and Paul, Saul, learned everything from him. Saul, as a, as a student of a rabbi, would have known the Old Testament inside and out. So immediately when he got saved, he went and he preached Christ in the, uh, in the synagogues. He would have been a skilled preacher, a skilled communicator of God's word. He would have been a skilled theologian, although he had only just come to know Jesus, yet he would have still been skilled. Now, here was the result of this. All who heard Saul, Paul, preaching were amazed. They, they, I mean, think about it. They, they were just shocked. They, they were taken aback. Wait, wait a second. Is not this guy, is, is this not the one, Saul, Paul, who destroyed all those who are called on this name in Jerusalem? Isn't he the one that's persecuting all the Christians? Isn't he the one that's destroying all the Christians? He came here for that same purpose so that he might bring us people, Christians, bound to the chief priests. That was his goal. What's going on? How's this happening? That this guy who came to destroy, who's been destroying, who was putting people into prison, who was, who was rooting for people to be murdered, who was taking possessions, who was causing persecution, how... Is he now calling on the name of Jesus? It's This is beyond understanding. What an incredible testimony that would have been. But Saul increased all the more in strength, and he confounded the Jews who were his friends and his brethren who lived in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. So 
Saul, Paul, went from all of the sudden persecuting to having a dramatic experience to now preaching immediately and then taking all of the knowledge that he had already had and connecting the dots. Now he was proving and confounding them because he was showing evidence from the Old Testament that Jesus really is the Messiah. Now think about it. They did not have a New Testament at that time. They had no letters. They had no gospels written. They had nothing. It ended in the Old Testament. Everything in the Old Testament points to Jesus. All you have to do is read the Old Testament, understand the Old Testament, understand Torah, look at what is being presented there, and you have everything you need to point people to Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of what was prophesied about in the Old Testament. He is the Messiah. He is the Meshiach. He is the one who has come, the anointed one. He is the fulfillment of everything that we have been looking for and everything that we have been hoping for. And once Saul was converted, when he began to connect those dots with the Old Testament, he confounded all of the Jews and he proved that Jesus is the Christ. Now, many days were passed and now the Jews were plotting against Saul. Saul was the plotter. He was the one that was persecuting. Now he is on the other end of that. Now they're plotting to kill him. But... God miraculously let Saul in on the secret. It's amazing how God does that in our lives, that God gives us some indications and he lets us in on secret things in order for us to know. Their plot became known to Saul. Now, they watched the gates day and night because they were trying to catch him as he went through the city gates. That's where they were going to ambush him. But that didn't happen. Because the disciples, who at first had to be confused by him because they didn't really know if they could trust him, now they can trust him and they want to protect him and they want to love him and watch out for him. So the disciples took Saul by night and they let him down through the wall in a large basket. So now every city would have been surrounded by walls. The only way in and out would have been through the city gate. That's where they were waiting to ambush him. Instead, they found a, hall, a, a wall. They found a maybe a window or a crack or something in the wall and they put him in a large basket and they lowered him down by a rope and that's how he escaped and that's how he got out of where he was at. Now, when Saul had come to Jerusalem, so, so Saul went from Damascus down to Jerusalem, and he was going to try to join the disciples, but they were all afraid him, of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. And, and that makes perfect sense. Would you believe him? He has been persecuting. He has been threatening. Now you think, well, well, now he's just pretending. He's trying to infiltrate, and we're, he, he's trying to get us to let our guard down. He can be let in, and then he is going to take advantage of us, and he's going to destroy us from the inside. He's going to come in. He, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. So they did not believe that he was a disciple, but Barnabas, Barnabas the encourager, Barnabas the one who, who loved God, who trusted God, Barnabas is the one who took him, trusted Saul, and brought him to the, the apostles, to the twelve. And Barnabas declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So he was with them, Saul was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and going out, and he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Hellenists, but they attempted to kill him. When the brethren found out, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him out to Tarsus. And so Paul at this time, Saul at this time, was a, he was under threat. He was under severe persecution. He had been the one persecuting, yet now he is receiving the persecution. How did, how did the disciples know that this was real, that he was genuine? Well, one, by how he had declared, number two, his testimony, number three, how he preached boldly, and number four, they could tell because of the persecution he was facing. Persecution often reveals the true character of a person. 
when we go through in times events and persecution comes against the church, it will separate out who is genuine and who is false. Those who are just merely playing at church or playing at a relationship with Jesus will be separated out from those who are genuinely, really, authentically committed to Jesus. There will be a great separation. The Bible talks about it being a great apostasy that will happen at the church. That always happens with persecution. When there's persecution, when there's suffering, when it starts to cost you something, it tells who the true followers are. And so, how did they believe? How did they believe Saul? How did they know that he was telling the truth? Well, he had a testimony. He had a he he had the witness that happened. He um, he he preached boldly. He, um, he, he, would, he would speak out in public in front of them, and he was experiencing that persecution. And by seeing all of those signs, they said, yep, he's real, he's genuine. But now he's under threat, so we've got to get him out of here. So he was in Damascus, persecuted there. He was in Jerusalem, persecuted there. So they said, you know what? We've got to send him to Caesarea. We've got to send him out to Tarsus. We've got to get him out of here. Now, let me let me show you just a little picture of where that is located on the map. So here's what we have. Um, we have all of this stuff happening um, in an area. Uh, let's see. He was up here in uh, Damascus. That's where he was. Oh, I'm not going to use that color, let's use a different color. He was in Damascus up here, and uh, he went from Damascus down to Jerusalem. He had first come from Jerusalem and he went to Damascus. Now he had come back from Damascus back to Jerusalem, but now he's under severe persecution there. So they said, you know what? Let's send him to Caesarea Philippi. Let's send him to uh, the coast. We'll, we'll get him to a ship, and a ship will take him into, into, uh, in, into this area um, of Damascus. Um, and so I'm sorry, not Damascus. They will send him, um, in, into the area of Tarsus and, uh, Tarsus is right up here. You can't see it on the map, but it would be up in this general area. So if you looked up in this area here, this is where, um, where Tarsus is going to be, uh, somewhere up here. Tarsus is kind of modern day. If you look at a map, modern day Turkey, it is on the coast of modern day Turkey. That's where they're going to send him there he's going to be safe. There he can preach the word. There he can discuss. There he can, here he can wrestle with scripture. He can really get to know the Lord. He can do the best work there, headquartering himself in Tarsus. So let's keep going. Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified. It's amazing how once Saul was converted, now they have peace. He was the primary driving force of a lot of the persecution. But once he got saved, and once he had a testimony, a witness, once he was boldly proclaiming and preaching, once they saw he was under persecution, now the churches are safe. Now they're directing their energy at, them, at, at him. So all of the churches in Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, that's Israel. Israel is Judea, Samaria, and Galilee. Now Israel is, they're experiencing some peace. They're being edified. They're walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And they were multiplied. People were continuing to get saved. There was incredible evangelism and salvations that were happening. But just think of this. It wasn't just about being saved. Being saved is not really enough. Saying the prayer is not really enough. Just saying, oh, I love God is not enough. You have to make a, a willing step to say, and I will obey him. I will be his disciple. I will follow him. That in that day, and especially in parts of the world today, takes incredible, uh, incredible boldness. It takes incredible courage. It's an incredible commitment in that day and in the church around the world, especially the persecuted church around the world, to say, I am willing to follow Jesus. It may cost you your livelihood. It may cost you your property and possessions. It may cost you your family, and it may cost you your freedom, and it may cost you your life. It took incredible courage, and it still does to this day. 
The church in America has never had to face that. We have not had to face persecution. We have had comfort and ease and peace. As we approach the end times, I believe all of that is going away. And it will start costing you something to follow Jesus. It will not be enough to merely say, I love Jesus. It will be important to say, and I will obey him. I will commit to him. I will be his disciple and he will be my master. I will follow him with all of my heart. And it may very well cost your property, your livelihood, your possessions, family, freedom, and it may even cost your life. That is where we are headed as a church in this world. As we approach the end, as we approach the time of the Lord's return, great persecution is going to come upon all of the world. And it's going to separate out those who are really his and those who are not. Well, I hope today, like Paul, you have a testimony. I hope you are boldly proclaiming the truth. I hope that you are speaking out every opportunity you get. I hope that you are growing in God's grace and knowledge and that you are able to and ready to face persecution and suffering. Well, join me back here tomorrow. We'll get back into God's word, picking it up there in Acts chapter 9. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.